What's up you guys, it's Chris here. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about earwigs, uh, how to get them out of your house and how to prevent them from getting into your house. I've had a few customers recently who've been having issues with earwigs inside their house. Um, they see them crawling around the edges of the wall, sometimes they're on the ceiling. Uh, one woman said she found one in her bed and she freaked out and I don't want that to happen to you guys. So not only will I talk to you about preventing them from getting into your house, but I'll also talk about the biology. Um, as Sun Tzu would say, know thy enemy. So I think it's important we know a little bit about the earwig and what, it pre what its preferences are uh, to keep better help keep the earwig out. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, the lovely earwig. The word earwig comes from the Anglo-Saxon word earwicka, which means ear creature. Uh, that's because it was believed that this insect would crawl into your ear while you're sleeping and burrow into your brain. Latin is Dermaptera for Ficulina, which more accurately describes this bug. Dermaptera refers to skin-like. Uh, the four wings present in wing species and for Ficulina translates to little scissors, referring to the prominent forcep-like cerci extending from the abdomen. The cerci coming from the abdomen are actually less pincer, scissory like and more, they're more like an extra pair of legs. They're not really that strong. Uh, males use their cerci for hunting and fighting, but it's not, when they're fighting, it's not like they're cutting each other in half with these things. They're really just kind of wrestling with them and then whoever gets tired first loses. The females have more straighter Cersei, while the males, Cersei, are more curved. That's how you can distinguish them. The females, uh, when they lay eggs, they're laying like 30 to 55 eggs at a time. These eggs take around 20 to 70 days to hatch, which is kind of a uh, broad time to hatch an egg, but it really just depends on the temperatures. Cooler temperatures takes longer to hatch. When it's warmer temperatures in the summer months, their egg will hatch a lot faster. Earwigs are thigmotropic, uh, which means that's pretty much like the opposite of claustrophobic. Uh, they like being in tight spaces. They like being in cracks and surrounded on all sides. Um, they like the dark. They're cryptic in nature. They don't come out except at night. Some, I mean, you'll see them during the day if they're disturbed, of course, but generally they're less active during the day and crawl around a lot more at night. When I'm doing pest control, I generally find them under like potted plants uh, on the inside of the house and um, like behind furniture, uh, under refrigerators, by like the bottom of your molding on the doorway, usually there's a little gap there. Uh, they like to be there. Sometimes, um, a lot of the time, baseboards aren't flush with the ground and it leaves a gap there. Uh, earwigs love being in that environment, especially bathrooms. Think moisture areas. This is common. This is a common trend with all indoor pests. Um, you're going to see them gravitate towards moisture areas like bathrooms and kitchens and laundry rooms. This isn't the kind of bug that gets in your house and reproduces and infests, you know, extremely bad inside your house. At least that I've seen. I've never seen any crazy infestations. Um, so just know this is just a random bug that came in from outside. Yeah, they're ugly. Maybe you're freaked out, but they don't really do any harm. They don't crawl into your ear while you're sleeping. Um, they're just kind of there and they're ugly and that's, that's really it. So yeah, earwigs aren't just magically manifesting themselves inside of your house. Uh, pretty much hundred percent of earwigs you see in the house came from outside the house. So the trick is to keep them outside the house by applying perimeter sprays or, you know, sealing up the gaps and cracks that they're getting into, um, removing harborage areas outside around your house. If there does, for whatever reason, happen to be some crazy infestation in your basement or something, uh, it's best to use like a physical removal, get a vacuum cleaner, vacuum all of them up and away. I've never seen anything like that, but you know, they, maybe somewhere around the world there's crazy earwig infestations I'm unaware of. Um, to keep them out of the house, you want to start by removing their harborage areas. Unfortunately, their favorite habitat 
is created by you know the modern suburbanite and their fancy dancy landscaping um, when you have mulch beds and rock beds or you know I don't know pine straw patio furniture those little stepping stone rocks and rock ornaments you know all, all that kind of stuff um, earwigs love to be in it or under it lay their eggs under it have a bunch of earwigs under it and yeah so that's how they kind of surround your house especially those mulch beds um, I don't necessarily I mean you can have your fancy landscaping you don't need to remove your mulch beds and stuff but the things you can remove I mean if you have a bunch of garbage around the house tidy up get that stuff away if you have piles of lumber and piles of bricks um, clean that up those are places your weeks can go just you know make things nice if you have any overgrown shrubs and trees and branches and stuff like that keep them trimmed back from the house uh, if you have trees or bushes overgrowing your house. This is a pathway for earwigs to climb up and get in through a window or something. If you have a crawl space or a basement, do what you can to reduce the moisture in there. Um, earwigs are gonna gravitate towards places that have high humidity or moisture and that are dark and damp. So getting a vapor barrier or a dehumidifier in your crawl space or basement is something to look into. So other than removing harborage areas from around the house, the, uh, some pesticides you can look into. Um, historically, the best way to prevent earwigs was using baits, um, but over time, these baits were shown to be bad for the environment and have been pretty much phased out. There are some, a few baits still left today, Niban being one of them. Niban is a super, super safe uh, product whose active ingredient is boric acid. Boric acid breaks down and uh, turns into borate. And it's actually fine for us. We actually eat it naturally when we eat salads or vegetables where it's naturally occurring. Um, and while it's a healthy micronutrient for us, it's not so healthy for bugs. For bugs, borates block the nutrients they extract from the foods they eat. And since they can extract the nutrients, they starve to death. So with Niban, it's a granular bait. You pretty much just sprinkle it around your house, focus mostly on, like I said, the mulch bed areas is where these earwigs are going to be most likely to be seen. Um, you don't need to worry about, you know, killing birds or chickens or butterflies and bees with it. It's very safe, not going to hurt the bees and butterflies and pollinators. It's pretty much only going to hurt certain bugs like cockroaches, earwigs, slugs, and stuff like that. You can read the label. Um, a more, it, it, I mean, it's not like a super fast knockdown like a perimeter spray will be so for this for a spray instead if you want some faster results I would suggest demand CS um, this uses micro encapsulation and uh, when you spray it around your house you want to spray it on the foundation maybe like three feet up the foundation three feet away from the foundation and um, pay particular attention to spraying like the weep holes and the crawl space vents and around the first floor doors and windows. Um, try not to, if you're, if you're spraying it, try not to spray it on any like flowering plants because like as I mentioned you don't want to hurt the pollinators and the bees. If possible it's, you want to spray like, you know, you want to kind of saturate your whole mulch bed or rock bed with it as this is going to be where the greatest number and abundance of earwigs are going to be found. So spray that really well. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not a sponsor or whatever for any of these pest for demand or any of these pesticides. I've just used them in the past before and they work great for me, good results, and they're probably work for you too. Um, with the demand you can buy it in a little bottle um, you, and you can just, it's in a concentrate form so you'll have to dilute it in water. Uh, the rate is uh, 0.8 fluid ounces to one gallon of water and I just, I have one of these little pump sprayers I'll have to you know put a link for the for the one I use that I like but it has like a fan setting and a pin stream setting and like a cone spray setting um, but I like that one a lot 
Uh, demand not only can be used for the outdoors, um, but you don't need to spend any extra money. You can use the same stuff on the inside for a crack and crevice spray. I like to put my pump sprayer on like a pin stream setting and um, look at like the base of the baseboards or the door you know, the, the bottom of the door molding. Usually there's gaps there. Um, that's where I see most of the bugs go towards in the bathrooms, kind of around the edges of the bathrooms where the plumbing connects. There's not always, um, it's not always sealed very good, so you can spray around the plumbing. Um, try to get behind furniture, furniture that's like up against the wall. I'll try and spray behind there along the baseboard. But yeah, just stick to the edges and you should be good. And stick to a really good outside treatment and that should keep them from coming in your house at all. I would focus most of my efforts from, you know, focusing on the outside, keeping them from getting in the crawl space, uh, you know, or inside of your house. That's all I got for you today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and save the bees.